Yo, what is up? What's up, people? How's everybody doing today? We are live. We're going to be opening some uh, art tonight. We're going to be talking about everything I saw at ETLA. Um, it was pretty cool. It was a fun time. There was a buzz. Um, very exciting. <laughs> Talk stream, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna be doing some chatting. We're gonna be doing some chatting. Um, I am currently still watching back the fine, uh, the top eight of the Pro Tour. Um, I actually watched actually watched most of the finals what a what a finals wow man if you were at home watching that 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 must have been like riveting um i know i was i even knew the result and i was like how is this happening hey the arm pit the armed pit <laughs> call you pit for short maybe um, yeah, it was an insane match. Uh, I'm like halfway through his first KO match, and I'm like, this is insane. Just like, snap takes like, what was it, 12 or something? It was just crazy. Part of the cards moment? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was nuts. There was like some discussion in my local Discord about how it might have been pitch stacked, but I went back and looked. It was definitely not pitch stacked. He was definitely counting his cards to check the, like, uh, percentages, right? Like, I think the, like, obscene amount of skill expression there was blocking with the dragon. And, uh, blocking with the dragon and setting the sink was, like, man, that <laughs> was, like, dude, that was a big brain moment. Um... Yeah, man, I, I had a ton of fun out there. Uh, LA was really great, actually. The area was awesome. Hey, Dell. <laughs> he didn't know how to pitch stack? I, oh. <laughs> I have to watch the... Where's this interview at? That's hilarious. I love that he's just like, bro, I didn't. Oh, yeah, look at this. I've been hiding it. Check out this mat. This is a sick mat. Um, dude, what? Yeah, just crazy. Fake stack until you make stack? Dude. Oh, it's in French. <laughs> yeah, I will. I can't watch it. Um, dude, I'm a fake stacker for sure. I'm just like, I hope this works. Um, yeah, so let's start opening some cards while I chat about all things flesh and blood. Um, what else happened this weekend? Yeah, LA was great. The area was great. Oh, this is for Madi as well. Um, you know, California, a little expensive. Um, but the area, like, the hotel was super nice. Hotel was, uh, the, uh, convention center was really nice. Yeah, what else? Uh, I got to meet James White, and if you saw my Twitter, you saw that I uh, he gave me another pop collar to give away. So we're going to keep an eye out for that because we have another pop collar to give away. So that's very cool. Um, James asked me how the content was doing. Said we're doing the do, and uh, yeah, without even asking, he gave me another. Another pop collar, so we're gonna be giving that way to you know the peeps, right? So stick around for that. Like, subscribe, do all the stuff. Um we did a subscriber. We did a su subscriber like giveaway last time. I mean I don't know. Maybe we'll do something special. Maybe join the Discord or something. Hey, Riddle Man. I don't know. I got to think about something. I, I don't want to keep doing these subscriber giveaways. Maybe it's time to give some props to the OGs in the Discord. 
uh, something. I don't know. Keep, keep tuned. Oh, yeah, the dice order. I have a dice order going as well. Uh, I'm trying to get the 50 dice to do an order. I know it's a lot. They are very expensive since they are custom six-sided dice from Chessex. So, like, straight up, it's not even gonna... Not even gonna fake it out there, dude. It's uh, it's very expensive. There's now competitors that are much cheaper. Um, so I totally understand. Ooh, fate for scene. For the mold, locked and loaded. Totally understand, Dell. No problem. The dice do look really nice. Uh, Chessex does, you know, you, you, everyone in here knows what Chessex does. Yo, did you guys? All right, let's get to the, let's get to the, let's get down to it here. What'd you guys think of that reveal, huh? First super rare is a Max V. Dude, that reveal was nuts, man. Fab is like... The LSS doing these trailers is pretty awesome. I did get to talk to Alex and tell him personally that the trailers are awesome. So that was very cool. Um, but I'm going to be straight up with you. Every time I talk to anybody, James, while well, I did the meet and greet, Brian... Uh, Gottlieb, I caught him, talked to him for just a bit. Um, and I also talked to Alex, like I just said. Uh, these guys, <laughs> I tell you what, you can you can you can see it that they are like just amped for this set, um, more so than any other set. You know, they're obviously always going to be. Um, they're always they're never going to not be pumped for a set. But I, you can like, you can feel their energy this weekend for sure. <laughs> My wife was like, what the heck are you watching? Yeah, so <laughs> the trailer did get real, uh, get real heated, huh? <laughs> I told, I found Fino afterwards and I was like, Fino, you've done it. You've peaked. There's a lot of, there's a lot of feet in that trailer. <laughs> it's more flesh than blood. Yeah, that trailer definitely was a little on the, uh, <laughs> it's a funny way of putting it, but yeah. Reverberate. Um. Yeah, it was a good time. Uh, and then, also, on top of, like, learning about, well, we didn't learn anything about Chi other than it existed. I don't know, man. Like, Brian put out on his Twitter that uh, that um, no one's guessed it right, which is kind of wild. Um, I thought it was going to be like first time you pitch a blue each turn. First time you pitch a blue each turn, you get a chi and then, you know, it takes three turns because the chi is such a powerful effect. And then maybe there's cards that can give you extra chi like instants and stuff. I don't know. Who knows? I'm, I'm here for it, though. It's going to be sweet. Then on top of all of that, they uh, announced that Worlds was in Japan and Osaka. Dude, how cool is that? I'm, I think I'm actually going to push. I'm going to try to push hard to, uh, to make that happen this fall. Like, man... That's going to be a cool event. I think I think Japan is like going to blow the lid off of this uh off of this game to be honest. The soft, you know, from all accounts, the soft launch that happened in Japan is uh, you know, sounds like nothing but positive. I think that's just out of my range. Yeah, it's a trip, man. It's a trip. Some friends, some friends, uh, and myself were, you know, kind of contemplating how to make it work, right? And we might, uh, 
we might uh we might fly to Hawaii first. Stay for a day and then fly to Osaka. Which I mean, come on. We're talking about playing some playing some fab in Hawaii, then going to Osaka. Oh man. That's the dream. But definitely gotta do some planning on that front. Um, they also announced some really cool events in the United States. We've got a world premiere for set 14 in Tampa, which is like very doable for myself as well. That's exciting. Kevin is contraband. Yeah, where are all these, where are all them super rares at? Got a calling in Chicago, which is pretty cool. Oh, we got a rapid fire and an index. This box is very, uh, yeah, we're like halfway through. Um,. Planning on Tampa as well. Yeah, dude, that'd be sweet. Yeah, calling Chicago works for me as well since I am in Michigan. So we'll be uh, definitely be able to make that one. That's pretty cool. Home of the Ark Knights. Hopefully the M's pick up in this box. Straighten this up a bit. Yeah, that's a trip with the boys for sure. Oh, Ravenous Rebel. Yellow foil. Boo. World premieres are pretty sweet. Uh, I think I've said this before that like Tales is the Tales Vegas event was yeah definitely right off of uh, right off of COVID, but that was like one of my one of my favorite uh, events. It was like there was just a buzz in the air, you know, everyone getting to open the new product. It's very cool. Then we got to go to Cincinnati. I got to go to Cincinnati right after that. Stir the ether winds. So far, from what I can tell, uh, the coverage of the top eight has just been amazing. Brian killed it. Um, Mitch Leslie was amazing. A buddy of mine that doesn't even play Flesh and Blood was like, dude, wait, you have Mitch Leslie doing call by call? He's like, he does, got a rusted relic. Like, he does Overwatch. And I was like, oh, really? I did not know that. He was definitely a pro. Yeah. Where is. Gotta find some juice in here. All right, three of a kind. Cards kind of fallen from uh, fallen from grace at the moment. Kano was, dude. Kano made it in the top eight of the battle hardened. Did you guys see that? That was pretty crazy. Ooh, another fate. Double fate. Like, Kano can even, uh... Alright, so back-to-back -back M's. Arc Knight Ascendancy. 
Hopefully we can squeak in that third. Yeah, Chain end up winning it. Yeah, Chain's back getting W's, guys. I'm ve that's very exciting. I think Starvo numbers were quite down. Yeah. I think because Kasai won the uh, Sai won the calling, right? Which is very cool to see. That's not an easy event to win. Yeah, three of a kind in Arc Knight is tough. Lessons in Lava. That's a decent super, super rare now. Alright, couple packs left. No rune hood, rune flash. Oh, really? Uh, Matt Delts, right? Sealed battle harden, yeah. All right, last pack. Huh, got the play set of fate for scenes. It's pretty sweet. Bullseye bracers. You played Benji? Alright, not the most not the most heated box of arc I've ever seen. That's just how she goes sometimes there, Madi. I do appreciate you picking up the box. Um that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, it was mostly I did um you know, it was a lot of just chilling with friends this weekend. Um, you know, I didn't play in the Pro Tour, but... Or the calling, actually. I was doing side events. Oh, man. You know what, guys? You know what's super awesome? Is, um... So, they updated the packs that you get in, um... In Safe Shifts are Sealed. And they removed uh, WTR, so no one could play Dorinthia. So that was pretty sweet. I'm going to open a box of um, Evo for myself, since I do have a couple boxes left of this. Taking one for the team. Actually, you know, the cards are not too bad in this. But Shapeshifter Sealed was awesome. So I played Kasai. And it was pretty nice. I opened a buckler. Opened a uh, Steel Braid buckler. And I was going to play Hot Streak Kadachis. But I ended up playing uh, Buckler both times. Because I played against a Benji. And a... A Benji and a Betsy. So I was afraid of the overpower on Betsy. And of course, Benji, um, you know, the two blocks pretty, pretty important. But yeah, we're going to the back on these packs. Um, so I played, yeah, Dory Kadachi was not an option. You can't play it. They did give us a pack of bright lights, which was really awkward. Um, yeah, it was hard to use these cards. Uh, oh, excuse me, but yeah, uh, it was really fun. It was, uh, it was much better without Dory. Expedite. 
I don't think it's LSS trying to get rid of product. I think it's uh, SEG Con trying to get rid of <laughs> Evo. Yo, smashing performance. Let's go. No one opens this to a point where like these cards are starting to like pop off big time. It's kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, Bright Lights, is, we're joking around that like the Galaxy Brain move would have been pitch back all your Bright Lights cards to the bottom of your deck and then just like boost somebody to death at the end of the game. <laughs> but you'd have to have very specific packs, you know? Yo, okay. I'll take this for the cold foil. Hyper X3 Extended Arts. <laughs> Bright lights is poo poo. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's not great. There's no way around it. I think, I don't know. I've been kind of a fan of Bright Lights for, um, you know, like it's surface level. Yes, it's very, it's not, it wasn't that great. But I think once you peel it back and then you kind of dig in a little bit, I think the draft was pretty decent. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to say nice things here. It, it's, it's tough. It was, it was very polarizing, you know, not much I can tend to agree. It was not, not all that great. I think they probably, I think they took notes that an all a singular class set is not something that they can stomach. Not something that um, Yeah, I actually that's funny that you bring that up. Hey, Riddleman, how you doing? I'm doing good, my friend. I'm glad you got the sound working. Uh, yeah, if they change the class, maybe. I just think a different amount of people hate it then, you know, like a different, different group of people hate it. I was actually talking to Brian about that, um, Jason, about Outsiders, and he was like, yeah, Outsiders... Uh, heavy hitters is very much like upgraded outsiders and you know when he said that I was like oh yeah I guess that's a thing right they like learned that the, there was too many block threes in outsiders um, which you know is tough Made things weird in that set. <laughs> I don't think that's supposed to be like that. Uh, it's an all arcane set, not an all wizard set. So I'm guessing that could include a... Oh, quantum processor. You really have to do some dodging in this, though. Yeah, Bright Lights Marvel's like, yuck. That was tough. Definitely some growing pains with the uh, Marvel design.
sprocket rocket but I mean I guess an R arcane set could have um could have room blades and another set you know another class right uh I think it could get kind of I don't know we'll see I have faith that they would do something cool with it I, uh, yeah. I don't know, it's weird because they're designing so far out. Yeah, it could definitely be like an entirely new class, yeah. The new double and triple rune chance. Yeah, it'd be sweet, dude. Double rune chance. Pen script. Scrap processor. Necromancer is like high on everyone's list, man. Um, I also went to the design Q and A that Brian and uh, James put on. It was very cool. Uh, I spent a lot of time talking about D reacts and blocks. There was a question from a newer player about um about how it feels bad putting a like a new player putting a block card in their arsenal which is like yeah that's definitely feels bad <laughs> brian made a pretty good point yeah um that would have been kind of cool i didn't see anyone recording it so i don't think it was um but Brian was like, yeah, that's kind of, you only make that, we, they kind of leaned on the fact that, like, putting a block card in your arsenal is like, you only make that mistake once, which, it's true. Yeah, soul processor. I'll take it. It's like 10 bucks, I think. Um, during the last event of the weekend, too, guys, did you see on my Twitter, I pulled a Victor High and Mighty. <laughs> that was pretty sweet. Victor Marvel. Alright, last pack. Yo, alright. I can dig it. They did mention that, like, Dominate is kind of by itself. And, um, like, Dominate will, they're like, Dominate will come back, but there won't be Dominate and, um, oh, shoot, what am I trying to say? There won't be Dominate and Overpower in the same box, same set. Just like there won't be defense reactions and block cards in the same set. It's like one or the other. Um, they did mention too that, and I think they've said this before, they developed the block cards because they have a really hard time because you can't really get any better than Sink Below and Fate for Scene. They like admitted that it was like a, it was a, a those two cards are like, you know kind of like the peak and so they had to like bring in block the block design so they could start putting text on car on blocks like trounce um for example you know um another thing that they they said was really cool was uh they started in heavy hitters with balance of justice um <laughs> Jason, that's not uh Yeah, I don't they never they there was there was no mention of banning them or even it was even hinted. I think it's a I think it's just, you know, those are in, are in the game, right? Um 
They also mentioned that Balance of Justice was one of the first legendaries that did, that they started doing a Crown of Providence test. And they explained what they meant by Crown of Providence test or Tunic test or Snapdragon's test is that does this legendary um, ask the question strong enough to replace uh, those cards, right? So Tunic, they mentioned Tunic, Snapdragons, and, and Crown, of, Crown of Providence is the cards that they kind of now start as a litmus test for legendaries, um, which I thought was really cool because, um, yeah, Balance of Justice is a great example of, like, I guess their design philosophy with that card and, like, you know, does it ask the question of Crown of Providence uh, to be swapped out or not, which was pretty neat. And they said Mist Veil legendaries all ran through that litmus test. So I'm here for that, man. We, we need to have legendaries kind of um, ask those questions of Snapdragon scalers and tunics and Crown of Providences and stuff. Yeah. So that me. so I mean, I think, uh, hey, Travis, how are you? Thanks for coming and hanging out. Um, yeah, so I think that means like, you know, oh, you know, I think the legendaries in, yeah, but you can still use generics with mystic heroes. So it, I think it's a, you know, it's bad. They're like making sure that the legendaries that they're printing are at least serviceable or like at least played, right? Arms are sitting there like a slot. I, I mean, I think bone. I think maybe bone breaker, apex bone breaker, was a definite litmus test against. Um, could have been a litmus test against uh, gambler's gloves for sure. I mean. Yeah, there also could be generic legendaries in the expansion slot too, as well. Um, but I mean, we've seen this before, Riddler Man, with like Redback Shroud, just being like not on par with Tunic at all. Uh, Diana Carapace is, yeah, exactly, right. I, I think there's a, I think there's examples out there where like legendaries just don't, um, didn't meet the. Uh, didn't meet, uh, didn't meet the bar, right? I think balance is um, a good example of what they're probably trying to hit, even though that is. Um, so, yeah, I thought it was a good comment. Um, I think it gives us a little bit of insight into what we can expect in Miss Vale. Um, but yeah, so overall it was a pretty good, it was a pretty good Q and A. I think they, uh, I think a lot of the time was spent on D reacts and, and, uh, block cards, which was like fine. It was good info, but I mean, not the spiciest info. Um, they did admit that, uh, not admit, but they did say that in the uh, expansion slot from Miss Vale, Vincent's going to get a card and it's going to be very, um, it's going to be very, uh, they said you're going to understand how to use it right away. So I don't know if that means it's going to be strong or uh, I think it's just going to be very clear. <laughs> I think they said that because of like the confusion with Prism, maybe. I don't know if there was much confusion with Prism, but. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, so go check out the live blog. 
Um, dude, I'll be back on Vincent when she's like, I'll be back on Vincent when she's, you know, minimum B tier. But, I mean, I got the deck waiting. I mean, I'm I'm here for understanding how they like fix the consistency problems. I'm not a game designer, so I, I struggle with the idea of how you do that, but I'm sure they're cooking up something pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, what else happened? Uh, yeah, I mean, that was it. Um, I'm excited to see more callings come. I'm excited to see other TOs get callings too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Jason, you just you just you have to make a rune chant, and then you have to blow up the you have to destroy the rune chant to go, to just fatigue yourself. Even more so when Vincent doesn't have a, a fatigue plant at all. Yeah, fatigue is a struggle. Um, but yeah, the callings in Portland and Chicago being TO'd by Min Max Games and Fat Foundry is pretty sweet. I think that's a cool development this weekend as well. Um, spreading out from SEG. Get some, get some other options, you know, in there. Or calling level events. But. How was the experience for you guys at home? Like, I know we talked a little bit about the. Uh, the um, coverage being pretty good. I know Savage Feet seems like they've killed it. You know, when I watch. Um, so from what I've seen so far, like. Savage Feats like nailed it, man. Like the production value was through the roof. Um, but not a surprise, right? We know Savage Feats kills it. Best ever Super Bowl status. Nice. That's sick. Yeah, I'm 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 parsing through it right now. Um for sure. It's weird because like at the event, you know, they just have like the one like uh, the one like blown out um, thing that you can stand in front of. Right. The lights are so bright that you can barely see it. Uh, so it's not really a. Uh, it's not really doable on site. Yeah, Brian is like. Yeah, the little bit I've seen so far, Brian was killing it with, like, just the insights um, and, like, little tips and knowledge points and stuff. Like, just using that design that design uh, insight to kind of counter, uh, not counter, but, like, work off of Mitch, right? That was very cool. Um... See. Oh, I don't see my binder. Oh. Well then. I don't know what I... Oh, hold on. One second stream. Alright. Let me find... Let me find something here. I, I almost forgot to show you guys this. This is a little PSA if you're going to events in the future. Oh, uh, so much to look for. Oh, you guys will find this funny. <laughs> so I was I was sitting in line for James White and they're like, oh, you don't have like two to three things for him to sign, you know, like, and then, so I was like looking at this gray binder right here. I was like, what do I have him sign? <laughs> He's like, why is this card so important to you? I was like, well, I love shadow heroes. 
and it's kind of a meme because you know it got spoiled it was spoiled while uh nate and i were live doing a live buy list which is hilarious it was very uh funny because i was just like i was like visibly saddened <laughs> um so now i'm forever i'm forever linking myself to that card that's not what I wanted to show you. It's in here somewhere. I swear. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Boom. Look at that. How cool is that? Huh? So, Iserado, Iserati was had a trade binder so you could trade him the promo and he would uh do this special signature now this signature cannot be done at the event let's uh let's get a little closer so this is like his special fade signature that can't be done at the event but he can do it beforehand um and i saw this in the little trade binder and of course, I didn't bring any of my jack-o'-lanterns, so I had to run around like a madman trying to get this last one. <laughs> but I got it. And now, the next time we go somewhere with him, I have to bring all of them with me so that I can trade them out. Yeah. So that was one of my big finds this weekend, actually. I got three more rune chants. I didn't get any artist proofs this time around. Um, I just, yeah, I don't have a good reason why I didn't. <laughs> TC trip, yeah. Um, I just wasn't, you know, they're kind of expensive, so kind of just hung out. I did find this, you know. Um, my binder is a mess, guys. I have to redo this whole thing. Um, oh, so, if you weren't here in the beginning of the stream. So, these are the popped collars that I got from James. And I don't think you can see it very well. It was on my Twitter, but this one we're going to give away. Since, um, you know, he just said, here, here's an extra. This is for you and the channel. Like, like a boss. Like, so cool. And then he gave me this one. Can you see that? He wrote Ted on the shirt like it was embroidered. <laughs> uh. He's like, this one's Ted. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool, man. I'm down. I could dig it. It made me laugh. It was quite funny. He's wearing a TCG Ted shirt. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see. But he like got out the special, the special uh, blue Sharpie he had there instead of the, the uh, gold one. Kind of a neat little thing that happened, but I got TCG Ted pop collars uh, or pop collar shirt. Oh, that's hilarious. That'd be funny. That'd be too funny. But um, so yeah, some of the cool stuff I found. Uh, I'm not gonna pull them all out, but I did get. I think I'm up to four cold foil rune chants now. So, yeah. How many e pots did I get? I got a I, I got a good amount. Um, I got a good amount. These these e pots are like, yeah. Don't mind. They're still in their cellophane, but um, I did try to grab did try to grab a decent amount of these. Trying to get my play set. It's a beautiful card, man. 
I, you know what? I love the extended art versions of cards so much in this game. Thing I just noticed too is that the cold foil generic border kind of like works with the um, the gold pot very well. I'm glad that like right away, yeah, Arcane Lantern EA is so good too, man. I was kind of hoping all shields would be EA for Guardians, but then we got the uh, we got the gold shield. And there was too much text. Oh. Oh, that was another thing that they said in that. Um, they said in that. Uh, uh, Q&A. That's funny that it just popped in my head. They said, like, you guys don't understand how. How, like, hard it is. Like, this is like a limiting factor for some effects, right? Because they don't have they only have so much space they can fit in here. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, look at this card. It's just like, this is probably the smallest they can make the font, right? Before it's like unreadable. So yeah, they're like, you have no idea how hard it is to like, you know, fit in some abilities and fit in what we want to and all that stuff. Like uh, the example they used and why that came up was uh, Dominate. So, all right, Travis, thanks for hanging out, man. Um, so they sat on, they, the, the reason they brought that up about the, the card text was they were talking about dominate, like I said before, where, you know, they won't be mixed dominate and overpower in the same set, all that stuff. And they said that the head rules guy, oh, uh, Someone in chat knows his name. I, I forgot it. Uh, I apologize. If you know it in chat, throw it in chat. But the, the head rules guy at LSS was able to like shorten the dominate um, italics and and uh, kind of short that Bob. <laughs> Definitely not Bob. Um, and that like allows them to use dominate use the dominate keyword on more cards, which I, you know, never would have thought of, you know? So, yeah, I thought that was really interesting and a neat little tidbit. Jason, uh, I think you're wrong, but I think you're wrong, my friend. All right. I think that's going to call it for tonight. We opened a couple boxes. We hit some legendaries. Um, Jock your brain. Yeah. It is Josh. Yes. Windrunner, thank you so much. <laughs> it's Josh. There it is. Well, Josh was able to shorten the dominate helper text and keyword text that they have to put in the box so they're now able to use dominate on more cards or cards with more effects so that's pretty cool uh but yeah let's wrap it up there guys uh i got some cool stuff showed you some cool stuff thanks for hanging out with me um come back to the channel tomorrow night I tomorrow night around six, six o'clock. I try to get all my videos out at six o'clock Wednesday. I'm going to keep trying to hit that buy list. Uh, sorry, deep dive around six. Um, so I'm putting together something. I think this week's theme is going to be cards that saw a bump from, uh, saw a bump from this weekend and maybe a handful of cards on the deep dive that cards that maybe saw some stream time and didn't see a bump just yet uh maybe give give uh give you guys some heads up on that um but yeah i'll, I'll throw something together quick like 10 15 minute video come check it out tomorrow uh and then we're gonna have a i think we're gonna have a buy the return of the buy list episode 52 possibly friday or this weekend 
So come check that out. And uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Please leave a like. Subscribe if you like the content. Um, exclamation point Discord gets you into the Discord. Come, come chat in there. Uh, it's pretty chill in there right now. So um, you can check out what's going on with the stream and all that jazz. So appreciate you guys. Peace. I'll talk to you later. See you next Tuesday. I'm out of here.